Shalom, shalom. At ease. At ease. So you, you had a question? Right. What's your question, bro? Okay, my question is. Listen, before you ask your question, it's not crazy, right? No. Nah. All right. All right, my question is, I don't believe nobody seen God. No man on earth gonna ever seen God. See, right? you, you mean the Father or are you talking about Christ? Who are you talking about? I'm talking about the Father. Right? Okay. You talking about the Father? I'm talking about the Father of uh, Jesus. Ain't nobody never seen God, in my opinion, right? And God didn't, everybody believe the same. Everybody believe the same, huh? I don't care if you're Chinese, Japanese, what color you is, your blood the same. So, what's your so question? we were made, your question. my question is we were made by the same person, don't care how you pray. You praying to one that's, God. That's not a question. That's you're praying question. to one God. That's not a question. Give me, um, give me second edges real quick. Matter of fact, don't, don't even go to second edges. I'm not going to get into that because he said, so the brother said, nobody seen God. So give me, uh, -uh I want, I want, um, give me John 14 and seven. Cause let's see how Christ looked. Cause Christ is a black man according to the Bible. So he would have to look like his father, right? He would have to look like somebody. So we don't have to actually know how the father looks as long as we know how the son looks. Right. That's where he come from. He come from the son. So give me that in John chapter 14. Read that, verse 7. John. John chapter 14 and verse 8. Philip said unto him, Lord, shew us the father. So Philip, he asked Christ. He said, can you show me the father? Like, who's the father? How do we look, right? Read. And it suffices us. Uh -huh, read. Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. Have I been so long time with you? And yet, hast thou not known me, Philip? He says, Y'all been walking with me this whole time, and you don't know this? What you, about, what you asking me? Read. He that has seen me has seen the Father. Have you seen Christ? You see my Father. What is Christ saying? Christ is saying, I look like my father. That's right. So if you see me, you see a dark skinned man with woolly hair, brown skin, that looks like it's burnt in a frat, in a, in a, in a furnace, you see my father. Right. You see God, the most high God. Let's get it. Give me Daniels. Give me Daniels, chapter 7. Let's get it. Because in this Bible, yes, John 14 and 8, it goes over how Christ looked, right? So Christ came from a man. We all was born from a woman, right? We all was in the womb nine months. So we all have some type, we might look like our moms, we might look like our father, but we look like someone. God wasn't just imaginary, he just a puff of smoke. He right. actually looked like something, he had an image. Right. Yes ma'am, we're gonna, we're gonna get that again because the brother was bringing it out, we're gonna bring it out again. Yes, this is about the father, how the father looked. Watch this, read. Daniel! Chapter 7 and verse 9. Read it out. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So Daniel is seeing a vision. He's seeing all the nations, all the kingdoms that ruled the Israelites. He's seeing it being destroyed in this vision. So when it says it's being cast down, he's seeing the destruction of these other nations. Read. And the ancient of days did sit. It says the ancient of days. The Most High is before days, he before anything. He's before everything. That's why it says the Ancient of Days, because he's before time. Right. So that's what it's going into. And it says, he sit. Read that again. And the Ancient of Days did sit. So he sit. In order for you to sit, you must have a what? Read it out. You must have a what if you, if you got to sit down? What you got? It's not hard. What you got? Because they say, a lot of people say that God, he don't exist. He's a puff of smoke. So if you must sit in a chair, what must you have? Legs? A body? Read? What's it? And the ancient of days did sit. He sat, read. Whose garment. Whose what? Whose garment uh -huh. was white as snow. So his garment, he had clothes. So he had a body. So where he could sit in a chair and he had clothes on. That sounds like a person, right? Right. It says that he had 
he had a body to where he could sit because he was sitting on his throne, right? His throne is in heaven. It's in, it's in beyond this heaven because this heaven is the sky. That's all it's going into, right? So the most high God is in, is in heaven and he's sitting on his throne, right? Read. Okay. Whose garment was white as snow uh -huh. and the hair. The what? The hair. The what? The hair. He had hair on his head. He had hair just like Christ. But let's see how that hair was. And the hair of his head, like the pure womb. Like the womb? Like the pure womb. God had woolly hair. The only people on the face of this planet has woolly hair. Sister, sister, where you going? Come back, come back, come back. Come on, come back. You can't come up here. You want the image? You want the image of Christ? We showing you the Father. Now we're going to show you Christ. We're going to show you. Because you want the image. That's what you came up here for, right? You want to know how Christ looked. We were showing you that Christ looks like his father. He had that same woolly head just like his father. So go back to Revelation for me. Go finish out Daniel real quick. Real quick. And then we're going to go to Christ. Because Christ John. looked like his father. John. Watch this. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. Uh -huh. And the Ancient of Days did sit. Whose garment was white as snow. Uh -huh. And the hair of his head... Like the pure wool. Like the pure wool. Sis, who on the face of this planet has woolly hair? Who? What people? Us who? Black people, right? According to the according to the scriptures, God had the same hair as us. Right. So what is, what should that tell you? What should that tell you? He was black. Bring it out. So how come they teach you that in the churches? They I don't go to church. You don't go to church? Good. Stay out of church because they don't teach you who you are. Right. Now let's get... Hold on, sis. Hold on. Don't, don't try to run. Don't try to run, sis. Hold on. Now we're going to get to Christ because you was asking. Hey, sis, you got a question too? You can come up too, sis. You right there with the great... You just listening? All right. Check this out. Okay. Don't sweat it. Watch this. Now we're going to get into Christ. All right. Read. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. Bring it out. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. So the word revelation means to reveal. Right. So John, the revelator, is about to reveal to us in the scriptures how Christ looked. Right. Watch this. 14. See, verse 14. Uh -huh. His head and his hairs like, were, like, were white like wool. So it says Jesus Christ, the greatest man that ever walked the face of this planet, it said his hairs were white like wool. He had hair on top of his head and he had hair that's on his a, face. It trend. says it was white like wool. Bring it out. Wool in texture and white in color, right. meaning fully gray. What people on the face of this planet has wool hair? Bring it out. Bring it out. Black people. Let's get some more. Let's get some more, sis. Check this out. Read. His head and his hairs were white like wool, uh -huh. as white as snow. Uh -huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So his eyes was a flame of fire because Christ drank wine. One of his first miracles was, okay, I got you, sis. One of his first miracles was he turned water into wine. So that's why his eyes was red. But let's get his skin tone, right? And his feet like unto fine brass. So his feet unto fine brass. Sis, what color is brass? Like a brown color, right? It's a derivative of brown. So John the Revelator saw Christ, saw him, and he saw the woolly hair, and he saw his skin. But let's see how dark he was. And his feet like unto fine brass, uh -huh. as if they burn in a furnace. So you take that furnace, you take that brown color, and you throw it in a furnace or you burn it, what color would it turn? Black. It would be very dark. Now, if Christ was a if Christ had woolly hair and he was walking this earth and he didn't care how he looked, he loved his natural hair. Should we do the same thing? Right. Leviticus 13. Should we do the same thing? Should we want to walk as he walked? Should we want to look like he looked? Right. Because when the Father created Christ, he was the first author of beauty. That was beauty. Now in America, they say that beauty is something totally different. Somebody with long, straight hair. 
But according to the Bible, God had woolly hair. Right. So we should be proud of that thing. Right. We're a real representation of the Most High God. Yes. Now, let me get that for you real quick. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 29. If a man or a woman have a plague upon the head or the beard, then the priest shall see the plague and behold, if, if, it, if it be in sight, deeper than the skin. Uh -huh. Hold on. So it says, if the priest, like, like this sister, she got woolly hair. That's, that's very beautiful. That's, that's a representation of Christ. We got woolly hair, right? So it says, if the priest shall see the plague. So what is a plague? What's a plague? It, it's pretty much something bad, right? Like, like a disease or something, like a plague. Sis, sister with the hat, come back. I'm talking to you too, all right? We going into, we going into how our people, how we look, how we were supposed to look, right? We're going into our true nationality, right? According to the Bible, right? Christ had woolly hair. We trying to explain to that sister as well that we should be proud of how we look. So read that again. Then the priest shall see the plague uh -huh. and behold, if it be, be in sight deeper than the skin, uh -huh. and there be in it a yellow thin hair. So a yellow thin hair. Christ had woolly hair. His people had woolly hair. The, the priest said at this thing that he sees is a plague if it's yellow and straight, stringy hair. Read. Then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. So if you see anybody with yellow hair, according to the Bible, God says that's unclean. Right. I didn't make I didn't make you that way for your hair to turn yellow. A lot of our people, they like to follow these people here. They like to follow the so-called white man. Right. They like, they say he's the sex symbol. Right. Right. How they look, that's how our people want to look. Right. But we were the first creations, right? We are the chosen people. So everybody should be trying to look like us. We shouldn't be trying to look like them. We're the we're the holy ones of this of this Bible of this world. We're royalty. Everybody should be following us, not us following them. We lost our way along. We lost ourselves along the way. So we're out here to bring that back to our people, back to who they truly are. Right. That you're more than an African American and a Negro and a Hispanic. That's those were names that were given to you. You understand? When well, we were brought here on slave ships. And we're going to get that. We're going to show that in the Bible. So what we was bringing out to the sister was that you should be proud of how you look. You understand? How you God created you. He was the first author of beauty who created Christ. And we look just like Christ. The same everything. So we should be proud of that thing. We shouldn't hide it or we shouldn't try to change it to try to fit into society. That's what the world teaches us, right? So since you wanted to know who you are according to the Bible, how, why we say, black people, why we say we're the children of Israel, we're going to prove to you how we are the children of Israel right. with the holy words, right? Watch this. Give me Deuteronomy. Bring it out. Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. Bring it out. But it shall come to pass. Future prophecy. Moses, I'm gonna give you a, a synopsis, right? We just came out of the we just came out of Egypt. We left Egypt. Egypt was destroyed. So Moses is talking to the children of Israel. He's talking to them because Moses already went up and he got the commandments from God. So he's talking to the children of Israel and he's telling them, listen, if y'all do good, y'all gonna rule over these nations. Y'all gonna be on a good status. But if you don't do good, if you refuse to listen to God, this is what's going to happen. Read. But it shall come to pass uh -huh. if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if we did not listen to what God was saying, read. To observe, to do all his commandments uh -huh. and his statutes, uh -huh. which I command thee this day, that all these curses. All these what? All these curses. Now, sis, is, is curses, is that a good thing or that's a bad thing? That's a bad thing. So Moses was telling the children of Israel, listen, if we, don't, if we do not keep God's laws, we are going to be cursed. Read on. That all these curses uh -huh. shall come upon thee uh -huh. and overtake thee. Uh -huh. 
Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. God told Moses, tell them, listen, if they don't do what I tell them to do, they're going to be cursed in the city. What's in our city? The ghettos. Today, no matter how hard we try, we still can't overcome these curses. Right. We still, we still in the bottom. We still at the bottom. Read on. Read on. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, uh -huh. and cursed shalt thou be in the field. And cursed shall we be in the field. I'm going to grab this sign real quick. Cursed shall we be in the field, right? So, if you look at this sign right here, when were we cursed in the field? When were we cursed in the field? In slavery. That happened. At the time when Moses was talking to the Israelites, that didn't happen. And what God was giving us, these laws, these laws wasn't for our detrimental. It was to help us. And how we live, how we govern each other. That was our heritage. We right. kept those things. We followed that. So give me verse, I want 61. Because I want to touch something real quick. Because we refuse to keep God's laws, now you see what's going on right now. Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 61. Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 61. Come on. Also, every sickness uh -huh. and every plague uh -huh. which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So God is saying, if we refuse to keep his laws, he's going to put sickness upon us. Right now, in America and all over the world, what is going rampant around? What, what's happening? What's plaguing, what's, what's plaguing America and all over the world? What do people have now? That coronavirus, right? It's out here running rampant. It's out here running rampant because we refuse to keep God's laws. At one point, a lot of our people were saying, listen, we can't catch it. We can't get it. It's only the other nations that's getting it. No, that's not true. You're going to get it, too, because you refuse to keep God's laws. Right. And to show you how our people are, when, when the white man gets on TV and says, listen, y'all need to do this, y'all need to do that, our people follow. Right. But when the Israelites, when we come out here and God has told you from the beginning to keep my commandments, nobody listens. Right. No right one out. listens, but they listen to the so-called white man. Right. That lets you know our people reverence the white man. Right. They see him as our God. Right. You understand? But he cannot save us according to, uh, he cannot save us. Only God can save us. Right. Right. Only we can save ourselves by keeping God's commandments. Right. right? Let's get some more. Give me, let's, I'm going to show you some more on that picture right there. Give me Deuteronomy 28. Go to 48. Let's get some more. Let's show, we're going to prove some more that we, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, that we are the Israelites. Yes. And we can prove it out of these scriptures. Right. No other nation can. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 47. Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. So because you refuse to worship me. You refuse to do the things I say, I'm going to cause all this havoc and all these problems that's going to come upon y'all, which is called curses. Read. For the abundance of all things, therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemy. God is saying you're going to serve your enemies. Bring it out. Your enemies, not your friends. You're going to serve your enemies because you refuse to listen to me. So you don't want to listen to me. I got somebody for you to listen to. Right. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and hunger because you refuse to listen to me to what I told you to do. I'm the father. You're my children. I told you to do this. You don't want to listen to me when you're hungry. You will have to go to another nation for food. Bring it out. Taco Bell, Subway, you name it. Your favorite restaurants that you like to go to McDonald's, whatever. You will have to go to another nation to provide that for you. Right. We don't own none of those companies. We don't own McDonald's and Subways and none of those chains. We don't own any of that. Kroger, the grocery store, even the farmer's market. We don't own none of that. So because you refuse to listen to me, now you're going to have to serve your enemies for food. Read. And in thirst 
and and thirst. When you're thirsty, our people running all up in Kroger, all up in the stores, buying up all the water because they scared of the coronavirus. You're going to have to go to your enemies for that. You got to go to your enemies for that. Read. And in nakedness and nakedness, the clothing that you wear. We don't make the raw textile. I know we might have like celebrities like Pete Diddy and Jay-Z. They got Rockaway and Sean John. It's just the name. We don't make the raw textile for those clothing. So God is saying for normal things, natural things that your own nation is supposed to provide for himself, for themselves, you have to go to another nation and they're going to provide it for you. Read. Right. And in want of all things. In a want of all things. In education. You want a cure for the coronavirus. You got to go to your enemies for it. You want understanding on how to stay safe in the house from the coronavirus, you got to look to your enemies for that. Because you refuse to keep my laws. Now let's see how this enemies, how these people dealt with, with God's people. Read. And he shall put a yoke of iron. And it says he, your enemies, your enemies who you have to serve shall do what? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Until he have destroyed thee. So God is saying, your enemies, thank you, will put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Did that actually happen to a people? Yes. You better believe it. That happened to us, the so-called the so-called African Americans and the Hispanics. We were the only people that had chains and yokes upon our necks. What are we reading? We're reading the Bible. Right. That happened to the children of Israel. Yes, this right. is history that you can't refute. Right. That only happened to us. Right. What are we proving? We got a Bible to get out? Yeah. No, we don't. We don't have a Bible to give out. So, these... Now they will see the true men of God. We are not black men, we are the Israelites. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.